I'm here to tell you, there's nothing like the Lord moving upon your heart and having His way in your heart and in your life. And as I look back over my history, we all have a history. Amen. We all have a past. Amen. That's the one thing that the Lord, He did for me early in my walk with Him. And somewhere along the way, I share with you all uh, how that that kind of died out and, and, and I lost that, that fire. And, and really, my relationship with the Lord was not that I wasn't saved, but my relationship with the Lord had been, had been severed. But at one time when the Lord was really moving greatly upon my heart and, and, and our relationship was really, really good, um, I would look at people and every time I would look into their eyes, all I could think about was their life and the history. And, and as I would look into people's eyes, I would think about the person that they were and the, the, the life that made them who they were because you never know just who you're looking at or just who you're dealing with. You never know the things that people have gone through, what has made them who they are, the situations, the circumstances. I, I think about that as I think about what I want to do with these homeless people. Um, a lot of people, I, I know that, that there are a lot of people out there that, that just want to do drugs and they just want money to do drugs. And, and I understand that. And at one time I didn't care. But as the Lord moves upon my heart, I just keep saying, Lord, if you can just reach one, Lord. If you can just grab a hold of one heart, Lord, that's sick and tired of who they are, Lord. One heart that's sick and tired of drugs and alcohol and bondage and, and, and even uh, sexual desires, things like that, that are a bondage in people's lives. Listen, those things, I know those things become a bondage. <coughs> they start off as something you enjoy and then somewhere along the, along the line they control you, they own you, they tell you where to go, what to do. They become more important to you than the very family that you love. Yes. They become a bondage yes. that owns you. I'm so thankful that the Lord has set me free. Amen. I'm so thankful and... and, and so appreciative that he has seen fit to set me free from all of that, all of those things, not because I deserved it, not because there was anything special about me, but just because it's what he does. It's who he is. Brother Troy, it's who he is. It's what he does. He sets the captive free. And I want to encourage you this morning as we get into this message. I, I titled this message just simply Biblical Christianity. And at the end of that, I have in parentheses, are you experiencing it? Biblical Christianity, are you experiencing it? And as we, I've been encouraging as I've ministered at home at our church and as the Lord has been moving upon my heart, I've encouraged people to, as we go through the word of God, I would ask that you would evaluate yourself. <clears throat> In your own life, not your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your boss or your pastor or the preacher or the teacher, but that you as an individual would evaluate yourself and ask yourself, Lord, am I experiencing biblical Christianity, not religion, not what somebody told me I should experience, but what your word says I should experience as I walk in relationship with you. Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter 5, I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. The apostle would write, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. And gave himself for me. Father we just thank you for your mercy. And your grace Lord God. We thank you. For your presence in this place Lord. Father we thank you for Calvary. For the blood that sets us free. From all bondages Lord. That can give us victory over the world. The flesh. The devil. All temptations that come our way. Father as we come before you today. We ask that by your spirit Lord. You'd minister 
to our hearts by your word, Lord God, that you'd strengthen us in the faith, that you'd teach us, Lord, that you'd chasten us, Lord, that you'd do whatever it is that, you, that needs to be done for our hearts and our lives to grow in you, Father. In Jesus' name, <coughs> amen. The Apostle Paul would write, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He would go on to say in verse 21, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. We know and understand because of the teaching that we've experienced, because of the understanding, thank God, that, that the Lord had put in His Word, first of all, but that He, under, that he uh, gave the revelation to people like Brother Swagger and other men throughout the years. As I study and I learn and I see, there are many men throughout the years that had a revelation of who Christ is and what He accomplished at Calvary, of this new covenant. Did you hear what I'm saying? Because we're going to talk about a new covenant this morning. Amen. I explained to my nine-year-old son the other day after church, uh, after uh, Thursday night service, I was coming back from, from church and, and I was just thinking about the new covenant, the new testament. Yes. And I was thinking about what the Lord has, has done and how mighty and a wonderful a way that he has made for you and I to experience his presence, to experience his righteousness, to experience victory over the world, the flesh and the devil. Amen. The Word of God is, is separated into two portions. One portion is the Old Testament. One portion is the New Testament. And that simply means Old Covenant and New Covenant. Amen. There's an Old Covenant and there's a New Covenant. That's what it means. Testament means covenant. And I explained that to my nine-year-old son as I was so excited. I said, son, do you know how the Bible is written, what it's about? Do you, do you have a little bit of an understanding? Have you ever heard the word Old Testament? Have you ever heard the word New Testament? I said, do you know what it means? He said, no, not really. I said, well, Old Testament means covenant. The Old covenant and New Testament means new covenant. I said, do you know what that word means? He said, not really. I said, well, let me explain it to you. It's an agreement. It's an agreement. In the Old Testament, God made an agreement. He made an agreement with Abraham. He made an agreement with Moses. Throughout the Old Testament, we see God making an agreement. But in the Old Testament, constantly, we over and over, we see men that could not keep the agreement. <clears throat> None of them kept the agreement perfectly like they should have. That's right. Even David did his best, but he didn't keep the agreement. He didn't live up to the stature of the law. He didn't live up to the standard that God requires. Yes. But I'm here to tell you that we are in a new covenant, Amen. that there's a new testament. Jesus Christ said that this cup yes. is my blood. It represents my blood. It's a new testament. I'll give my body. I'll give my blood for that new agreement, that new covenant Hallelujah. that's going to be made on your behalf. I'm here to tell you that what we walk in today, we walk in a new testament. We walk in a new covenant. We walk in a new agreement. Yes. Church, do you hear what I'm saying? We live under a new agreement. It's an agreement that God made with his son Jesus on Calvary's cross. He said there's not a man good enough. There's not a man capable enough to do what needs to be done. That can cause me to look beyond the sin that's in your heart and life and give you what I want to give you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So he swore by himself. Amen. Is what he was portraying in the Old Testament. And he sent his son. Last night as I was preparing, the Lord said, just preach the simple gospel. Amen. Just share the simple gospel with my people. Um, I'm here to tell you that Jesus Christ has made an agreement yes. on your behalf. You. He's made an agreement with his Father on your behalf. And my question is to you, what do you think about that agreement? Mm -hmm. In your own, do you scoff at it? Some people scoff at it. Some, especially men. Men think they're tough. I used to think I was tough. Come on. I used to think I was something strong and something special. Oh yeah, it didn't matter. I was going to prove what I had to prove when it come down to it. I used to always, I used to always love to tell people all the time on the job. Somebody mess with me. I said, well, man, at the end of the day, I said I might not beat you up, but you'll know I was there. Come on, brother. You know you was in something. Pride, toughness, scoffing at the agreement that God made with His Son. But on the inside, a brokenness, an emptiness. 
this world couldn't feel. An emptiness that women couldn't feel, that drugs couldn't feel, that alcohol couldn't feel, a brokenness. Yeah. The further and further I went, understanding more and more and more that I was in bondage, that I was a slave to sin, that it was not me that ran my life, but yet there was a force that I didn't understand, that I didn't know about, that controlled me. It owned me. It told me what to do. It told me when to do it. Come on. And I tried over and over again to defeat that thing. And it always went a little something like this. I would get to do it good, get a decent job, and I would get ahead of the game. And the next thing I knew, I was 10 steps by. Mm. It was a cycle. It was a cycle is what it was. It was over and over again. Oh, I'm never going to do this again. I'm never going to live. I'm never going to cheat on my family. Listen to me, men and women. Whenever you step outside of the, the covenant relationship that God has given you between your husband and your wife, you're not only cheating on that spouse, but you're cheating on your children. And that was what the Lord began to show me after he saved me. He said, you're not only messing around with her, you're messing around with your family, your children. You're taking time away from them. Your life belongs to them. It belongs to this that I've given you. I don't know why the Lord led me there this morning. I'm here to tell you that, that marriage is a covenant. And it's nothing more than a typification of the covenant agreement that we have in Christ Jesus. Christ. The marriage between Christ and his bride that we are as the church. But it was a vicious cycle over and over and over again, doing the same things over and over and over again. I'd get ahead of the game, get set up. All this happened constantly over. I'm talking, I can remember at least four or five times where I would, everything would be going good. And then all of a sudden, self came back. And that that I really was came back. And that that was buried down deep on the inside of me began to raise itself up once again. And control me. And own me. But I'm so glad. Amen. I'm so thankful. Free. That today I'm crucified with Christ. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I'm saying? The new covenant. I do not frustrate the grace of God. The apostle Paul would say. If righteousness comes by any other way. Did Christ die in vain? I'm here to tell you today that if you're struggling with something, and we're going to work this out and look at this throughout the message, if you realize here today that you're sitting here and you're in bondage to sin, you're in bondage to the world, the flesh, the devil, I'm talking to you too, Christian. Because guess what? I've, I've realized what it was like to be in bondage as a sinner, and I've seen what it's like to be in bondage as a saint. Come on. Amen. And the latter is far worse than the former. It's far worse to be in bondage as a saint than it is as a sinner. Because when you're a saint, whenever you've been saved by God's grace, whenever he sets you free from the bondage of sin and you've tasted and you've experienced the goodness of God, you've Come experienced on. the power of the Holy Ghost giving you victory in your life, giving you something that you realize in and of yourself that you can't provide yourself, that you realize that it's something that came from the outside that filled you and influenced you. And changed you. It's just something so sweet about that. But when you find yourself back in bondage. Struggling again. With the same old sins. Not able to find the presence of the God. Trying your best. Trying your hardest. To find this presence. I want to tell you that the same place you left his presence. His presence is still there. Hallelujah. His presence is still found in His sacrifice. His presence is still found <coughs> in His righteousness. His presence is still found where His grace dwells. And if you're in that place today, I want to encourage you not to give up and not to quit. But I also want to tell you, don't stay there. Hallelujah. You don't have to stay there. He wants to give you victory today Thank you, Lord. over the world the flesh, and the devil. Last night the Lord kept laying something on my heart and I'm just going to say this and I'm going to move it on. I'm going to move on. But it was one word 
that the Lord kept laying on my heart. And if I offend you, I'm sorry, but I feel like I'm speaking what the Lord is giving to me. But it was the word fornication that the Lord kept laying on my heart. Over and over again, fornication. If you don't know what that means, it simply means um, relations outside of marriage. Relationship outside of marriage. The Lord kept placing that on my heart over and over again. So we're going to move on with that. So we understand because of what we've been taught, what we have learned about the message of cross, that you and I, we've been crucified with Christ, the word of God says. That spiritually, what he's done for you and I, spiritually, what he's done is that he's taken you and I and he's placed us in Christ at the cross. He's placed it there. He's made us to be one with Christ. Amen. At Calvary. At the altar. Yes. The true altar. A few of you came up to the altar this morning. But I want you to understand that the true altar has always been Calvary. Yes. And what happens whenever you make a trip up here, man, whenever you came up here this morning, uh, just a little while ago, what happened was your car, your heart had already made it to Calvary. Yes. Your heart had already made it to the altar. And your feet were just following along. That's what makes this altar a sacred place. It's because it represents it's a simplification of what Christ did at Calvary. Whenever you find a person broken at the altar, it's because their heart has already made its way to Calvary. Their heart has already made its way to Jesus. And He's doing something on the inside of them. Yes. He's doing something That's good. on the inside of them. It's the same thing with the marriage, the, the sanctimonious marriage. It's why we as the church must stand against homosexuality. We as the church must stand against a man and a man being married or a woman and a woman being married. Because that altar where a man and a woman join together, it's a typification of Calvary. It's a representation of a man and a woman coming together in a covenant relationship, an agreement before God. Yes. What does the word of God say about a man and a woman when they come together? They become one. Amen. They become one person. They leave their household. They leave their families and they become one together. It's sanctimonious. It's a type of the altar where we stand at the type of altar where we become crucified with Christ, where we become one with him. The word of God says yes. we become one with him. That's what the word of God says. About the church. That we've become one with Christ. That we're crucified with him. Let me read the rest of that again. He said nevertheless I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. I want to ask you this morning. Is Christ alive in you? Is Christ alive. In you. Listen. Don't mistake church attendance. With Christ being alive in you. Good. Don't mistake reading your Bible with Christ being alive in you. Don't mistake preacher ministry to the homeless with Christ being alive in you. That's good. No. That don't prove nothing. That just proves you can do stuff. <laughs> but is he alive in you? Listen, this God is a right now God. He's a near God. He's an inside God. He wants to do an inside job. On the inside of you. Is Christ alive in you? Is He living and moving and breathing inside of you? That's what He wants to do. Listen, this is the, the only thing that separates us from every other religion is that Christ lives in me. That's right. Yes. That Christ lives in me. Amen. He gave himself as a sacrifice so that he could have access. Listen to me. So that he could have access into your heart. So that he could have access into your life. So that he can live and move and have his very being inside of you. Yes, Lord. The Apostle Paul said he would that Christ would be formed on the inside of us. That's something that's been with me so much lately that Christ is being formed in me. That it's not what would Jesus do. I'm not walking around asking myself what would Jesus do. I'm walking around learning how to submit to the Jesus that wants to do in me. Hallelujah. He wants to do something in me. He wants to do something through me. Yes. But it takes us, you and I, coming to a place of submission. Yes. And if that means we have to be broken over and over and over again. If you find yourself going around the potter's wheel over and over again, it's because you've yet to submit. 
You've yet to been made into the piece of clay that He wants you to be. So He crumples you up, He presses you, and He squeezes you, and He brings you to a place of brokenness again. Mm. Have you yet to figure out and understand that the only way you'll walk with God is in brokenness? Mm. That's what this relationship is with Him. A broken man, a broken woman, broken down. Sick and tired of who they are and what they are. Ready and willing to give it all up. And saying, not me, Lord, but you living in me. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Yes. Is he living in you? Oh, it's what he wants to do, church. He wants to live inside of you. <clears throat> he wants to live and move inside of you. He wants to remove things from your life. Don't make excuses for why you can do things that you know are not right. Don't make excuses for why you can allow those little foxes in your life, those little things that destroy your walk with God, that bring you back into bondage over and over again. I've watched and I've seen grace become a reason why I can. That's what it is to the modern church. Even to many people that proclaim the message of the cross, it's a reason why I can. It's a reason why I can live like this. It's a reason why I don't have to deal with these things in my life. It's a reason why I can listen to this or watch that. It's a reason why I can go here and there. I'm in freedom. But let me tell you something. When freedom comes, when real true freedom comes... Other things go. That's right. Amen. That's Other things go. Because the more and more that you become free in Christ, the more and more you become a slave to Him. <clears throat> With freedom comes slavery. A freedom from self, a freedom from this world, a freedom from sin. But you become like the Apostle Paul said, I'm a slave to Christ. Yes. My life, Lord, it belongs to you. It doesn't belong to me. You paid a mighty, mighty price. The shedding of your precious, pure blood. I know you've maybe seen it before, but I've seen before on Facebook when they have the pride festivals. Where people carry these signs and they say if Jesus comes back, we'll kill him again. Mm. My heart breaks. Because what they don't understand is that no one killed him. That's right. Amen. They didn't kill him. He said, no man takes my life from me. But I lay it down. Yes. Yes. If you remember the night that they came to take him. And they asked, who is Jesus? And he said, I am. Mm. And they all fell down before him. They all fell backwards at his power. His supremacy. The creator of all things. But that's what the darkened heart thinks about Jesus. They hate him. Like Matt had those little tracks that we brought out. They want to kill him. They'd kill him again if they could. I'm here to tell you that no one killed him. But he freely gave his life yeah. for you and I. Yeah. <coughs> whether you accept that or not, whether you scoff at it or not, whatever you think about it, it doesn't make a difference. He still laid his life down for you. Yes. My question is, will you let him take your life from you and fill you with himself? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live, I live by, empowered by the faith of the Son of God. Is that your life today? Are you crucified with Christ? Have you surrendered your whole self to Him? Will you surrender your whole self to Him? It's what He's asking for. I want to go through a few, a few other verses and look at this. I want to go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 real quick. The Word of God says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God who hath reconciled us to Himself 
by Jesus Christ and have given to us the ministry of reconciliation. <coughs> to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's what God has done for you and I in Jesus Christ. That he has called us together in Christ. It's the work of, of the cross. It's the ministry of the cross. The ministry of Calvary is a ministry of reconciliation. It's God taking a man or woman who's come to a place that they realize they're lost and they're undone, that they're full of sin and that they're separated. Listen, it's more than a sinner's prayer. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? This is more than going to the altar, saying a little prayer. It's more than getting baptized when you're 8, 10, 12, 14 years old. It's more than all of that. It's a spiritual work. We just saw right there in uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 what he said. That if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. He's made new. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm here to tell you today that if you're just trusting in the fact that you said a prayer, if you're just trusting in the fact that you got baptized or got sprinkled with a little bit of water, or you're just trusting in the fact that some priest told you now you're part of the church, I'm here to tell you that the Word of God says otherwise. The Word of God says except you be born again, you will not see this kingdom of God. The word of God says that evidence that you've been born again is that you've received a new heart, that you've received a new spirit, and that old things are passed away, and that all things are become new. Has it happened to you? Well, my preacher, I don't care what your preacher said. I'm talking about what does the word of God say? What does God's word say? Not what do I say or what does Matt say, but what does God's word say? Have you been born again? Have you received a new heart? Have you been transformed? Have you been reconciled to God in Christ Jesus? Examine yourselves. Yeah. Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Have you been born again? Have you received a new heart? Do you remember amazing grace? How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. Oh, do you remember when you could see? Do you remember the day that you could see? That's the common theme of the Christian. Anyone who's ever been born again can tell you the day that, they've been, that they was made able to see. They might not be able to tell you the exact date, but they can tell you about it. They can tell you about when their eyes were opened, when they received that new heart, when they floated away from the altar because the weight of sin was off of their back. That's right. Have you been born again? That's the first step that's got to be taken. You've got to be born again. You've got to receive a new heart. If you have not received a new heart, I don't care what the preacher said. I don't care what the teacher said. I don't care what the priest said. I don't care what anybody said. If you have not received a new heart from the Spirit of God and been reconciled to God in Christ Jesus, you are not born again. You are not saved and you will not be until that happens. You must be born again. You must be born again. It's got to take place, church. This is something that you have to have happen to you. You must be born again. See, this is the new covenant. God taking you as, as Matt has preached many a times out of Adam. Where's the new man? Is there another one? He's taking you out of Adam and he's placed you in Christ. You've become one with him. You've now become a partaker of the ministry of reconciliation. You've been reconciled Back to God. Now you're part of the new covenant. When God looks upon you, He gives His grace. He gives His Spirit to you. Not because anything you've done, but all because you believed and trusted in who Christ is and what He did. Yeah. Now the covenant that you walk in, the agreement that you walk in, what you're walking in every day is saying, Lord, I trust in what you and Jesus did. Amen. Not me, Lord. Yes. I don't trust in me, Lord. It's not about me. It's not about my life. It's not about my failures. It's not about all of these things, Lord. I put my trust in the agreement that you and your son Jesus made on my behalf at Calvary. And I believe that that gives me all that I have need of. Yes, Lord. And when you're doing that, more than mentally, 
But in your heart, down in your spirit, when you're doing that deep down on the inside, you'll continue. Listen to me. The church today wants to give you a self-esteem lesson and tell you how good you are and how beautiful you are and how you have so much to offer. Come on. But the word of God says you have nothing that he has need of. The word of God says that, that he is good and he is great and you're a wretch. God says he don't need your talent. He don't need your ability. He don't need how good you can talk or how good you can sing. He don't need how good you can open the door for somebody. He don't need nothing from you. All he wants from you is your body so he can fill it up with his spirit. Hallelujah. Because it's him that's going to do the ministry. Yeah. It's him that's going to do the work. It's him that's going to touch somebody's heart. It's him that's going to change somebody's life. It's him that's going to place a new heart inside of them. It's him that's going to cause them to walk upright in a manner that he, that they never thought they could. He's going to do it. That's He's going to do it. This is his ministry. It's his covenant. It's his agreement. It's his work. And no flesh will glory in what he's done. No flesh. Have you received a new heart? Have you received that ministry of reconciliation? Have you been born again? I'm trying to hurry up. Y'all bear with me. See, we're the church. That's what we are, brother Troy. We're the church. What does that mean? The ecclesia. But it's more than a building. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> the ecclesia, the called out ones. Yes. We've been called out from the world. Yes. We're not supposed to look like the world. That's right. We're not supposed to talk like the world. We're not supposed to walk like the world. We're not supposed to smell like the world. Come on. We're separated unto God. Yes. He's called us out from this world. We've been called out by God, and we've been called out for God. That's yes. good. Yes. We've been called out by God, and we've been called out for God. Have you been called out? Are you satisfied with looking like the world, with acting like the world, with talking and walking like the world? Does that satisfy you? If it does, you have not been saved, you have not been born again, and you need to repent and give your heart to Jesus. Amen. And you can get mad at me, it don't really make no difference. I'm not here to make friends. You must be born again. Have you been called out? Have you felt the separation that God has placed? That's what he does. It says he, he places a hedge, a circle around you. You're his. And guess what happens? See, now you're, you're fit for growth in the kingdom. You're supposed to be growing. Are you growing? I'm talking about biblical Christianity. Any objections yet? <laughs> are, are, are you growing? Biblical Christianity. Are you experiencing this? So you've been called out by the Spirit of God. You've been called out and placed in Christ, and now there's a hedge around you. Even Jesus Christ is the one that is around you. He surrounds you, and He lives in you. Yes. You're called out to be separate from this world. You're called out to be different from this world. And guess what? The more you grow, the more you're going to be separate. The more you're built up in Christ, the more you're going to be separate. You ought not be inching back looking more and more like the world. You ought to be moving away and looking more and more like who Jesus is and what Jesus is. Amen. Dead to yourself. Dead to this world. Dead to the things of this world. And Christ liveth in me. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ liveth in me. Are you experiencing this? Come on. Are you experiencing this? Maybe you're sitting there and saying, Preacher, are you? I am. That's why I'm preaching like this. Because I'm experiencing it. And I like it. I love it. Oh, it feels good. It feels good. It feels good to lay in bed at night and just weep and cry. Say, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for what you've done. I thank you, Lord, for how you've changed me. Oh, Lord, the things that I've done, the history that I have, the life that I've lived is such a, is such a disgrace, Lord. Lord, you see all the things I've done behind closed doors, all the thoughts that I've thought, all the feelings that I've felt, the things that I've been involved in but you, with, but you love me still, yes. Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. You love me still. Not only did you love me, Lord, but you're changing me. I just want to give my whole life to you, Lord. Oh, that's what, I, Brother Gowdy, that's what I've been saying. I just want to give my whole life to you, Lord. 
I just want to give it all. On the way over here, I was worshiping the Lord and just praising Him. And I just said, Lord, I just want to give it all to You. You want your family to belong to the Lord? Give Him all of you. Give Him all of you. You want to make sure your kids don't die and go to hell? Give Him all of you. Give Him everything that's in you. Take it all, Lord. That's what the, the apostle told the, 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 the jailer. He said, not only you, but your house shall be saved. But are you living in biblical Christianity? Are your kids listening? Are your kids seeing biblical Christianity in mama and daddy? Do they see you worship the Lord? Do they see you call upon the name of the Lord? I sit in my chair sometimes now and just put on YouTube and put on music, worship music. Well, I used to. <coughs> Used to, I was so hardcore, I couldn't, nothing, I couldn't listen to nothing but the old stuff. But I tell you, in the freedom I found, I even been listening to the new stuff. Come on, brother. I sit in my chair now sometimes, and many times, and I put on YouTube. <coughs> I sit there in my recliner, Brother Troy, and just worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. And inside of me, there's an embarrassment that says, what are your kids going to think? Hey. What is your wife going to think? But there's another part of me that says, this is what they need to see. They need to know it's real. We've had enough fake Christianity for many years. Yeah. We've had enough people walking around saying one thing, but lives not being changed. I don't want a life that looks like the world. I want a life that's separate. Yes. I don't want a life that doesn't convict people. I want a life to where people know when they get around me that I'm not like they are. That something's different. Something's changed. Let me tell you something. The enemy will try to hold you in bondage to your hypocrisies, to your failures. He'll try to hold you in bondage. He'll try to cause you to shut up and not say anything. But I'm here to tell you that God will give you grace to overcome all of that. God will give you grace. He'll give you power. He'll give you victory all of those, over all of those things. And what will happen is, just like I said last time, you'll end up being like a Jeremiah, that it will be fire shut up in your bones. That even sometimes when you just don't even want to say nothing, when you don't want people to know you're even saved because you know that they're going to mock you behind your back. But you just can't contain it. Come on. You just can't contain it because it's burning on the inside. And now I'm saying, Lord... You caused me to be separate unto you. Now cause a fire to burn inside of me. Cause me not to give a, a hoot what anybody thinks. Yeah, cause me not to care one bit about what my co-workers thinks, what my dad thinks, what the preacher thinks, what the people thinks. Call me only, Lord, to care about what you think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let my heart be so surrendered to you, Lord, that you're the only one that matters to me. Yeah, right. You're the only, well, that's selfish, but no, it's not, because whenever he's the only one that matters to you, everything that matters to him will then matter to you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We need to be in a position in our relationship with God that he's the one that matters. You and only you, are, are you experiencing that? Self-evaluation. Are you experiencing that, church? Is this, is this taking place at all, what I'm talking about in your life? Listen, I'm not telling you something that's foreign to the Word of God. This is the Word of God, but that's I'm right. telling you what's taking place in my life is lines up with God's Word. Amen. <coughs> We've been reconciled. We're the church. We're called out for God, by God, that He may do a work in us yes. and through us, that He can fill us. Last time I was here, we talked about Him filling us with His love. That's what He wants to do. He wants to cause you to love people that the world says it's okay for you to hate. Amen. Yes. yes. He don't love like the world. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. He don't love like the world. I've, since the Lord's been doing this, I've been rethinking every way that I've ever felt, even as a Christian, everything that I've ever thought. Are you experiencing this? 
See, the more we grow in Christ, the more separate we should be finding ourselves. Are you growing in Christ? Listen, don't blame your growth in Christ on the preacher. Yeah. That's good. Don't blame it on the teacher. And there is some responsibility that we hold. That's right. There is some responsibility that we hold. But at the end of the day, your relationship with your God depends on you. You don't need God to change your wife or your boss or your job. You need Him to change you. Come on. You don't need them to die. You need you to die. Come on. That's right. Are you experiencing death to self? It's Christianity. Oh, you, you thought it was all about getting cars and things, huh? No, we don't preach that Osteen gospel here. Come on. <laughs> it's none of that. Amen. It's all about you dying. Amen. It's all about you being changed and transformed yes. into the image of Christ, the very yes. person of Christ. And when that happens, you know, you know what's a sign of the heart of Christ being formed in you? And don't take this the wrong way because I'm not asking you for anything. <clears throat> See, like Matt talked about Brother Gowdy. He said he was giving everything. Sending everything he had into the spreading of the gospel. Because he was willing to sacrifice everything because that's the heart that the Lord has placed in him. Yes. A heart just like the Lord, willing to sacrifice himself. Yes. Willing to sacrifice what you have, everything that you have, everything that is you for the benefit of others. First and foremost for the gospel. To go forth, penetrate and touch a heart and change their life. Is that happening in you? Are you experiencing Biblical Christianity, am I boring you this morning? No, it's not boring. Good preaching. That's what he wants to do in you. <coughs> I want to go to the book of Luke. Oh, it's fixing to get good. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, verse 21 is where we'll start. The last few years, last couple of years, however long it's been, I don't know, last year, I don't know. Whatever it's been where I was struggling in my walk with the Lord, I shared with you before. But I got to a place that I cried to the Lord and said, Lord, I just don't ever see you, Lord, how you can do anything with me. I don't see how you can change me, Lord. I don't see how you can change me. I'm just a mess. I know you've called me. I know you've spoken to me. I know I've heard your voice. I know you've touched me. But Lord, I'm so far from you. I'm so caught up in this world once again. I just don't know, Lord, how you could ever do anything with me. And I begin to cry out and say, Lord, accept that you would do something inside of me. Accept that you, Lord, would cause me to hate my own life. Except that you, Lord, would cause me to hate who I am and what I am. Except that you, Lord, would cause me to desire you more than anything else in this world. Nothing's ever going to happen inside of me, Lord. And that was the best place that I've ever been in my life. Because it's when you turn to him and you realize that only you, Lord, can do what needs to be done. Only you, Lord, can change me like I need to be changed. Only you, Lord, can fill me like I need to be filled. Only you, Lord, can reach the people. Only you, Lord, can touch the people. Only you Amen. can do anything. Not no talents or abilities or anything else. Only you, Lord, can do anything. You found yourself in a good place when you realized this, church. Have you realized that? Not with your lips, but deep down in your person, in your very being. Have you realized only you, Lord, can do anything? And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that, that thing, saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself 
and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now we understand that what that's talking about, first and foremost, is faith in who Christ is and what he did at Calvary. That's your cross. You've been united with him. You're one with him in his death. You're one with him in his burial. You're one with him in his resurrection. So what was happening to me when I began to cry out, Lord, only you, Lord, can do anything. Only you, Lord, can do in me what needs to be done. What I was saying, I, Lord, I can't do anything. I'm lost. I'm undone. Once again, I'm in the same place you found me so many times before. Only you, Lord, when you put your faith, when you put your trust wholly in who Christ is and what he did and it coming to an understanding, only him. Amen. Only he can get rid of that fornication problem. Only he can get rid of that mental problem. Only he can get rid of that drug problem. Only he can get rid of any of those things, that gossiping problem. Many people in the church are filled with that. Come on. Amen. Most of them ain't even a problem. It's all good. It's just who I am. That's my cross. No, the cross that Jesus wants you to carry is the one that will eliminate that. He wants you to put your faith in who he is and what he did. Yeah. And allow his spirit to bring you in subjection to who he is and what he did. But see, we can't stop there, though, because we can't discount the rest of the text. Because he goes on to say, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Is that happening in your heart? Is that happening in you? Are you experiencing what I'm talking about? He said, for what is it? What is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him, shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. Are you experiencing that? A laying down of your life, a surrendering of yourself to Calvary, a surrendering of yourself to who Christ is and what he did, allowing the moving and the operation of the Holy Spirit in your life. Listen, you can't hold on to the things that you want to hold on to, the things that you think are okay, the things that you think are good, and only give God what you don't want. Come on. It doesn't work like that. He don't just want the stuff that you don't want. He wants the stuff you're still clinging to. Come on. A lot of times, that's the stuff he wants first. Because he won't get rid of the other stuff until you let go of what you're holding on to. Some of y'all been begging God to deliver y'all from something. That y'all don't want to be having no part of. But at the same time, y'all been grabbing a hold of other stuff and saying, nah, yeah, I'm gonna, I want to keep this. Come on. And let me tell you something. The stuff you don't want ain't going to go until you get with God and give Him the stuff you do want. A total surrender, a full surrender. And it might take you getting to the place to where you have to come to an ugly realization about yourself. That you just ain't as good and pretty as what you like to think you are. All right. You haven't been changed quite as much as what you thought you'd been changed. You might have to get with yourself and realize it ain't the preacher. It ain't the worship team. It ain't none of that other stuff blocking your relationship with God, but it's you. Amen. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. But don't lose heart. Because I want to tell you that he hasn't loved. He hasn't left. But he will break you down once again. He'll break you down. And he'll bring you back to surrender. Are you experiencing that in your heart and life? Full surrender, a total submission to Calvary. A total submission to the will of God for your life. It's biblical Christianity. I know it doesn't sound fun, but it's good. It is good. It is good. It's good when you begin to see your pride and everything that you are being squashed and pushed down into nothing and the Spirit of God filling you. Yes. It's good. It's good when you're brought to a place of worship before God and all you can do is say, thank you, Lord. Yes. Much of my worship lately, much of my prayer, many times lately, all I've been able to do is just cry and say, thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Many times all I can say is, please don't stop, Lord. Please don't stop touching me. Please don't stop moving in my heart and in my life. Please, Lord, keep me. Please, Lord, don't let me go, Lord. I want to serve you. I want to live for you, Lord. I want to do whatever you want me to do, whatever you've called me to do, Lord. I want to do it, but I just want to have a relationship with you, Lord. I've got to have you. I've got to know you, Lord. I've got to hear your voice. Lord, I've got to feel your presence, Lord. I've got to know that you're near me. Are you experiencing that? That's what he wants to do. Christianity is more than a talk. It's more than a name that we wear. It's a person that lives inside of us. Are you experiencing that? I'm almost done. Y'all bear with me. Luke 14 and 25. And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, listen to this, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brother and sisters. Yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. I've shared this with people and some people don't understand it and others do. But over the last several months, I've come to a place, and I might have shared this with Matt, maybe I didn't, I don't know. But I've come to a place to where I hate my own life. I can't explain it. I hate it. I hate my life. It's something that's so out of the ordinary. I hate the things that are in me that cause me to move further away from the Lord. I hate the things that are that are around my life, that surround my life, that hinder me from a proper relationship with Him, from experiencing everything that He wants to do inside of me. That's good. Because listen, there's so much more, church. Listen to me, called out ones, ecclesia, sanctified, set apart, holy people of God. There's so much more that He wants to do inside His church. Look around. Each and every one of you in this new covenant, your little churches, your little temples of God. It's what the Apostle Paul said about you. Don't you know that your body is a holy temple? That you carry the presence of God inside of you? And I'm walking around thinking, Brother Troy, I carry the presence of God in here? That He's in here? Lord, well, there should be some miracles taking place. I'm not just talking about physical miracles. I'm talking about the miracle of me walking in victory over sin. Listen, that's a miracle. Yes. I know me. I know me. I know the bondage of sin that has gripped me ever since I was a young little boy. I can look back as an 8, 9, 10-year-old and see the bondage of sin that was in my life even at that young. And for me to be able to walk even 10 seconds without thinking the thought that I used to think is a miracle. It is a miracle. Are you experiencing that? Thank you, Jesus. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you're experiencing victory over sin, over the world, the flesh, and the devil, thank God. That's a miracle. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, it don't get no better than that. But I want to encourage you. Don't stop there because there's more. Listen, there's more. Now, don't leave that. Be like David. Put it in a, in a pouch on your side and wear it. Remember the things that the Lord took you from. Yes. Remember the things that He's done in your life. Don't ever let no preacher tell you to forget about the victory that He's given you. Yes. Now, you remember. And if you need to, you pull those victories out. And you encourage yourself in the Lord. Yes. Don't forget it. But there's so much more that He wants to do in you, church. There's so much more that He wants to do through you, church. Called out ones, holy people of God, sanctified, set apart by God, for God. So much more He wants to do in you. He'll bring you to a place to where you hate your own life. Well, I, I, can't, I, I can maybe see that, but I can't understand hating my wife and my children. What's He talking about? 
He's talking about that you're not willing to let no one, anything, get in between you and him. That not even yourself will stand between you and your God. Will you let yourself be eliminated? Will you allow your wife and children to be eliminated? Listen, don't run off and leave your wife. That's what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> God didn't tell you to do that. If you're hearing that voice saying that, that's you or that's the enemy. It ain't God. <laughs> what, he's saying, what he's saying is that the most important thing in your life will, you build, will be your relationship with God. Church, this is what he's called us into. Yes. He's called us into a living, breathing, personal relationship with God. Not with you and the preacher or not with you and somebody else, but you and God. Yes. You and Him. It's got to be between you and Him. And I want to ask you, are you walking in that relationship today? If you're here today and, and maybe you aren't walking in that relationship, I want you to know and understand that God wants to bring restoration between, between you and Him. He's a God of restoration. He wants to restore you to a right place with Him. If while you were yet a sinner, Christ died for you, how much more today, church, will He do mighty, wonderful things in your life? How much more? And I'm closing with this last verse here. This last, let me finish reading this, and I want to read one more thing. He said, And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and count the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, Lest happily after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it all, that behold, it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going, going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consulted, whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth ambassadors and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake not all that he hath cannot be my disciple. I didn't say it, Jesus said it. Amen. I thought it was by grace through faith, didn't you? Well, let me, talk, let, me, let me tell you this. If you're walking in proper faith, God will give you the grace you need to be at this place. Amen. Amen. If you're walking in proper faith, God will provide you with the grace that you need to get here. To this place to where you're willing and ready to lay it all down. Are you there? Are you there? I'm asked the musicians and the singers to come up. Or just the singer, if you will. Are you good to sing by yourself? Yes. Okay. Brother Paul's here. And as we've been ministering this word this morning, and I believe the Spirit of God has been moving upon hearts in this place. I believe that with all my heart. That he has touched some of you and he wants to do a work in some of you today. I'm going to go to one more verse of scripture while she gets ready to sing something, whatever it is that God lays on her heart. In John chapter 8 and verse 31. And this is something that the Lord has been doing in my heart and in my life. <coughs> First of all, I want to ask you this morning. Thank you, sir. Have you experienced victory in Christ over the world, the flesh, and the devil? Are you experiencing victory in your life? Have you been born again? Have you been reconciled to God by the blood of Jesus Christ? Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If you would continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever con continues in sin is the slave of sin. And the servant, the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, Listen to me, church. You shall be free. Indeed. Stand with me. <clears throat>